Hi, so I'm here with uh, Chris Ponting uh, again, and uh, I want to talk about the Prime uh, project um, that's been put together. And so, Chris, why don't you just uh, tell us what that's about? Yeah, thank you. So um, I believe that we need to accelerate uh, ME research towards effective therapies and diagnostics. And doing so, we shouldn't compete. We should work together. There should be uh, networks of people who are um, making good use of different expertise. And so in an interdisciplinary way, I think we should um, work better together. And, um, and in the knowledge that we ourselves are, are not going to uh, win uh, funding easily from our funding sources. So we have to club together and make sure that our applications are as good as possible. Do you think has that so, been a problem in the field that everybody's working on this and that and not? My in view is absolutely that that there have been myriad hypotheses um, and lots of individual studies, uh, many of of which have not been their results have not been replicated, um, and so we need to help one another to improve the replication rate, um, and in part is by you know, drawing upon expertise in different fields um, and in, in part by making sure that we are able to bring in as a field more, more funds than we have to have done so hitherto. So how is this project you know, geared towards that effort? Yeah, um, so I, in the UK, um, there are very few researchers. Uh, the, the critical mass has not been reached um, we know of one another. We, we're you know, very happy to talk to one another. Um, but we do, don't work together uh, and are not coordinated in a way that I would suspect people with ME would like us to. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the, we were told by the Medical Research Council of Funder here in the UK that um, there was a partnership grant application. We were told about this a long time ago. Um, and uh, we thought that once the Decode Me project would be uh, done, that we would bring together researchers who are within ME research and then also those who are outside, but who have expertise relevant to the results of Decode Me. We would bring them together um, and uh, es essentially catalyze new research projects. Uh, so this isn't, a, um, this isn't scientific research. This is not... Um, feathering my nest. This is trying to uh, catalyze future research. And as we've done with Decode and me in a co-production. So what is the structure that you're creating or what is the thing that, that's being done here? Yeah, so we will have um, lots of discussions. Uh, we will have an annual conference. Um, so that, that will improve the, our ability to communicate with one another and um, hopefully catalyze new projects. We will have four workshops uh, a year on different um, topics. So this is work in progress, new um, approaches that are going to be applied to ME research. It'll be uh, an open workshop. The first one's going to be on machine learning and, and AI in ME research. I'm sorry, um, it's going to be on, I didn't hear that. The first one's going to be on. Machine learning and artificial intelligence. Okay. As applied to, to ME. Um, and uh, with lived experience, um, people with lived experience, we're going to be delivering all of that. But also with, um, I think there are more, just more than half a dozen of us as academics from different places in the UK um, who are co-leading this, uh, this project. We'll be reaching out to industry. Um, we have uh, someone who's a project manager who will actively go out and, and seek new links into industry, into academia into international projects. Um, and so they will be a linchpin really and a, uh, a go-to person for, for anything that's going on in, uh, in the UK with respect to ME. Why do you think it's been hard to get people coordinated? I mean, we have had the trope here about, you know, hostile, pa hostile pa you know, death threat making patients and all that kind of thing. Has that, has that sort of stalled or has that, do you think that has discouraged some people from getting interested that that meme has been out there? Well, I think that's been out there. I, I don't think it's the main thing. Um, it, 
it reduced the likelihood of success of, of funding applications, I think, in the past, which has uh, reduced the evidence base uh, for ME of rule, which in turn then reduces the likelihood of further success of funding it mm. in the future. Um, rather, um, they're just too few people, too few people um, and who are working on it. And I think that's largely because of this lack of evidence. Um, no, you just, know, if you write right. a, just the record, can you say what your experience is working with patients on this on, on this field, just to put that out there that working you with patients is absolutely yeah. fantastic and brings scientific value to projects. Um, and if anyone thinks that they know everything about how to run a, a project and how it's relevant to people with ME, uh, well, good luck to them. But I didn't know all that I needed to know in a project. And to, to do that, we needed to to have knowledge across from scientific knowledge to lived experience knowledge. Um, and really, that was a major, major factor in what I think is um, the success of Decode ME. What, um, so what is the, ne well, first of all, with the Decode ME, um, what's happening with publication of that at this point? Is that... Uh... So obviously we've um, pre-printed the initial results and I was pleased to talk to you about that uh, at the beginning of August. Um, and we're still working on uh, producing additional results. We will write those up. Um, and when we're happy that we have done everything that we can do, we wish to do, then we will um, uh, update the preprint and send it to a journal for peer review. Okay, so right now it's still you're still working on it before it hasn't been yeah. sent out at this point. Or it's yeah, not... no, we're not sending it out um, uh, because it's not not ready. Um, we we still can do many things, um, and we outlined what those are in the uh, the preprint. Um, and we have uh, just a few more months left of of a little bit of funding at the end, but essentially we have disbanded the team, uh, unfortunately, because of. Uh, the funding period having ended, but we had a no cost extension to uh, to fund a little bit at the end, which is the analysis. So, what? How does the prime project fit in with 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 G code ME? Um, and yeah. where? What is exactly going on at this point with Primer? Actually, what's the funding? How much funding is there for that from the MRC? Yeah, it's for four years funding. Um, it, it's not a huge amount of money, uh, but it will pay for someone to be the project manager. Um, for all that time and to pay for um, patient public involvement, which is of course key, um, and the involvement of uh, professionals from Action for ME um, and, and our um, co-leads from different uh, universities in the UK. So, so that's essentially the budget um, and uh, will allow us to meet every week um, and uh, do what we have to do is to accelerate research. The three um, main aims that we have, which is to forge new collaborations with industry and academia, and we hope to do at least 15 of those, um, to establish or help enable um, international consortia, first on genetics and genomics, and then secondly on, on omics, which may help to do with uh, diagnosis. And the third is to establish a PPI pool so that people don't need to go out, the researchers don't need to go out and find new PPI. PPI is a, a PPI. patient public involvement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we, we hope um, that at least 100 people uh, will be recruited to that. And so if I, as an external researcher, wanted to, um, to initiate a project, then I would have um, you know, fantastic people ready to go who can start uh, and to discuss with me that project from the beginning. This is what involvement should be. Now, is this is it sort of, uh, you know, we have a couple of, uh, you know, like in the U.S., the Open Medicine Foundation has its various groups working. Um, we have the U.S. Uh, Clinicians Coalition. I mean, do you see it? Is, are those sort of models in a way or is are those are you doing something different or? Yeah, so I think there's a so I don't know. And this is part of the fact finding mission because uh, Clearly, I don't know everything, but I'm learning a lot from other people. So I hear that there's a, a Canadian uh, a network that they're having a, uh, a conference, and, and I hope that we'll uh, be um, listening in on that and learning from it. Um, and it's that sort of thing that we're going to do, to, uh, to do active listening so that we understand better how we fit into the international aspect as well. But we think we understand the UK landscape. landscape. Um, and can bring quite a lot of value to it initially. 
and our more international aspects will come later. Um, and similarly, the industry links will need to come. Have you seen interest since the decode ME findings? <laughs> Excuse me, from other researchers. I mean, have you seen? Has that sparked from your perspective further interest from people who might not have been interested before? Um, I think so, but there's a major problem um, in that the decode ME study design is not to implicate genes because uh, it cannot. It can implicate uh, intervals containing genes uh, with with ME diagnostic risk. Um, so we need to find out what the genes are first. Um, so there's so still words, quite a lot of work to be done. So you basically have identified areas on the genome, mm -hmm. but without specifying what yep. in that area is the yep. effective part yep. or the, the, the impactful part. Yeah. And, and there are one or two methods that we can try to, to work out what, uh, what ME genes we, we can uh, identify. Um, and that'll be part of what we discuss in the update to the preprint when we get to that point. Mm -hmm. um, um, at that point, then, individual genes, there will be experts in those genes in the relevant areas of uh, neurology and immunology. And absolutely, uh, the point of prime will then be to go knocking on their doors and say, uh, you're a busy person, but you should be working on him. So what uh, what does um, all this mean for the I, notion of some that um, ME uh, is a functional disorder uh, or, you know, something that uh, is impossible to elucidate pathophysiologically because there are sort of other, you know, things happening? Well, I find it really hard to put myself in other people's shoes at the best of times. I, I also find it hard to take the viewpoint that you've just expressed. Um, there are, of course, genetic risk uh, contributions um, to many different uh, aspects of, of human biology. Um, in fact, probably all of them. Um, so there will be genetic risk factors for the things that um, I know little about in psychiatry, for example. Um, what I, I can say is that uh, what we have found in, in Decode and Me is really strong evidence for genetic risk factors. Um, you were going to do further investigation with uh, um, Ian Lipkin at Columbia, and that seems not to be happening. Um, can you say anything about the reasons for that? Yeah, well, I think they're well-documented political uh, changes that have happened in the last 12 months. I'll probably, uh, I'll just leave it there. But scientifically, What's really important is that, um, that the US contributes to ME genetics. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I don't really care if I'm involved or not. If it happens, it, it, that would be brilliant. If anyone wants to do it and they want my help, that's fine um, uh, and advice. But um, without the US contributing, uh, the, the ability of, of the ME field to assign causality uh, to individual genes and cellular processes, that ability is is far less than it would have been otherwise. I mean, if, if the U.S. Uh, uh, investigators and research yeah. and funding is yeah. not involved. Well, and NIH that... is the world's greatest research, scientific research funder. Well, uh, well, without was, NIH... Was, was at one was. We don't know if it still is. It may uh, still be. Um, and I, you know, I'm a hopeful person. Um, I, I hope that... Uh, there will be still a lot of funds for ME and specifically for ME genetics. Well, we'll um, we'll and, you know, all, all that we have done is publicly um, available. The summary statistics are available, for example. Um, and therefore, uh, very happy to help and advise. Okay. And so when do you think that there may be some... Uh, you know, from prime sort of practice, like, like, when do we know if it's working, if it's, if it's something that's actually happening? Yeah, it, it can't be a talking shop. It can't have uh, negligible outcomes. Um, so we've set our, um, you know, indicators, our, our KPIs as to what we will deliver. And um, we will, we say, catalyze these 15 or more collaborations and um, that, you know, together uh, would introduce a million pounds or more into ME research. 
um, to establish or help establish these consortia that don't exist at the moment um, and to enable uh, other people to do research using PPI. So with 100 people, that will help a lot of research. Um, so those are our KPIs for the moment. Okay. Um, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it once again. No problem. As ever, good to talk to you. Okay.